and we just go ahead and get started. So, um, you know, standard stuff, take a look at team composition, think about who's the top three priorities. Um, this composition would be your top three. Um, first off, Ryan, uh, and then Bob, and that's really it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sigma's all right, especially if he's low, but not the best. But yeah, Reinhardt's probably going to be the main one you want to go for. Then when you're using Bob, um, the only thing to worry about with Bob is two things. First off, make sure he's in a good position and he on it in uh, or not on the Ash didn't launch him into nothingness. Uh, and the other thing is just make sure that he's not slept. Right? Maybe put like a, de a second delay, see if the sleep comes out, or you know, watch out for the Ana sleep, something like that, so that we're not just nanoing him and then having Ana sleep two ultimates. Alrighty, so um, previously on Ana here, we have we talked about the three check marks uh, or check boxes uh, of Ana positioning. Yes, we have. So the issue with this spot currently, in comparison to, let's say, this spot right here, or even just sitting down right side, is that this from this position, uh, we aren't checking the second box, which is can we can the enemy team see us? So from this position. Pretty much their entire team can see us, and the Hanzo actually gets a shot off on us, which is what forces us to back up and move, right, and rotate. Oh, uh, it's weird. Usually, there's a w at the start of replays, there's a wait time. I don't know why it just started immediately. Um, uh, this one is weird. I think it might end a little bit early, too. I don't know. I wonder if there's like a new update or something. Cause I, knew I there think was... it has something to do with the scrim code, maybe. Alrighty. Um, yeah, so, uh, in any case, right, we're, we're peeking here, yes, we can see our team, yeah, we can land some decent aids, but the issue he here mainly is that uh, we're able to just get shot really easily from here, and that forces us to use nade early, and it forces us to reposition in the middle of the fight, right? So, from this angle on the right, yeah, we can see our team now, and the enemy team can't see us, but now this isn't really an angle where we can land nades effectively, right? So now we're getting into the issue where we're not checking off the third checkbox. So typically, uh, something like top or uh, left here, unless they're on like a dive composition, um, this is going to be where we want to go because we can see our team, we can... Uh, zone them off using this left wall, right? And then if we want to land the nade, all we have to do is peek right side, and now we can see their whole team, right? Or we can, if we wanted to, we can walk left side here, but that's a little bit of a long trek. Um, but this position gives you a lot more options um, than, per se, sitting up on the high ground. So now if we also, um, if they're on like a dive or something, we might want to drop down to our team so that we're not isolating ourselves and we have our support from our teammates. Um, but yeah, let's see what we're doing, working with here. And yeah, make sure you're getting your health healed up, right? You don't want to be sit coming into the next fight. We just down 25 HP. It's always good to you have a good 20 seconds to heal it up. So grab a health pack, throw a nade, request healing from the mercy. So it's always good to just, you know, check up on that stuff in between rounds. Go. I'll keep you here. Yeah, so when we're looking for nades here, we probably are going to want to go through like the right room if we're looking for nades rather than chucking them straight in unless you see a really, really good one to go for. Um, so you just keep aware uh, or kind of keep in mind that that is a good angle that we can go for. But so far, we're just kind of, we're, ch we're chilling. Nothing's happened yet. Again, we're, we've now gone two straight fights without paying attention to our health bar. Just something we want to glance at every once in a while. Yep. 
Hey, like the self heal nade. Probably look for a nano right about now. Very late with a nano. Um, keep in mind, like, remember, we're trying to use that, you know, earlier in fights. We don't want to hold on to our ultimates. Um, I don't know if this is an, something that we've talked about previously, right? Um, or, sorry, have, have we talked about... Let me ask that real quick. Have we talked about why it's good to use ults early in the fight? Yes, we have. Yeah, so keep in mind, like, we probably don't want to hold in on to that very long. Right, especially if like the enemy Reinhardt is swinging on your Reinhardt and our Reinhardt's critical, that heals him up and turns the tables and allows our Reinhardt now to be the one who's starting to swing. So, um, probably gonna want to look to use it here. What is that? Sorry, I, I a weird sound going on in my background. Um, so, um, getting back on topic here. Um, the yeah, you nanoing Reinhardt flips the tables, keeps Ryan alive. He lets him start to do damage, put on pressure, and then on top of that, just gets our ultimate out before we're dying, which is going to be something we want to do, right? Us losing this fight is probably partially going to be in the fact that we didn't use nano at all here. Okay, so the other... So basically, us losing that point was kind of a two-part issue on our, on our end. Um... In a bad position, and being in that bad position doesn't allow for uh, good nade opportunities. Doesn't allow for it, it puts us out of line of sight of them, and it lets us heal our team. But the big thing is that us sitting down there rather than being on the top left high ground means that it's a lot more difficult to land nades. And there we didn't really land a single nade until like that last one on the McCree. Um, then on top of that, we just never used nano boost, right? Make sure you're paying attention to your health again. This is very seeming to be a common occurrence that we're not paying attention to our health in between fights. Really easy to just get that extra 30 HP up by throwing nade, requesting healing, or getting um, a health pack. So in the future, if I if I notice this again, I'll just quickly point it out. I'll just say, look at your health, and then we'll continue since I've already gone over that twice now. I will keep you healed. Oh, good dodge. Alrighty. Um, do they have any flank characters? Or dive characters? No. Okay, so when we're up against different team compositions, we change our play style and how we should be playing. Um, when we are not up against dive characters or flank characters, our ability should pretty much just be um, used all the time and tossed in there. So from here, for example, we can just be tossing in a sleep either through this angle or this angle. It's probably going to hit something. It's probably going to get value. Not a real reason to hold on to it because it's not like we're going to need it to um, save our life from a flank, right, or anything like that. Now, if they had a flanker, tracer, genji, if they had dive, then we might want to hold on to our sleeps and nades a little bit more often, but because they don't have anything that's really going to be doing that very often, maybe once in a while be a Hanzo, once in a while be a McCree, but it's not really something that we're going to want to hold on to a whole lot, so instead, we're just going to want to make sure that we're uh, throwing it down choke points like this, because if we toss it in right here and we just wait for like the Zari bubble to go down or we wait to see, okay, when does it look like Reinhardt's about to drop a shield? Then that's just a really easy sleep because they're all funneled through this tiny little area, right? Alrighty, fight number two, no ultimates, but that was lost after we got the dragon. Um, have we already gone, Have we, or have in the past we gone into ult tracking at all? Yeah, we did. Okay, yeah. so I see if I look back at the notes from the first session, yeah, we did. So, um, I guess we'll, we can, I'll just, I guess at some points here, 
go into that a little bit, but just keep in mind on that last fight, what we can do to, like, some ways that we can counter or grab Dragon, even if we don't, on our team, have a defensive ultimate, like, nothing on our team. Once we get grabbed, like, if we all get grabbed and we get Draven, dra well, Dragon, nothing we can do to stop it. But some per, uh, kind of precautionary measures or things that we can use to prevent it are uh, ult first, like, go in super hard into them. So that prevents them from being able to effectively land one right because they're gonna panic it um on top of that it might end like if we end up killing one or the other they might accidentally use just grab or just dragon essentially us like, engaging first is gonna um gives a higher chance of winning the fight and having them mess up their ultimates which gives them less chances to be able to use the grab dragon um now, the other thing we can do is just tell our team to play split, uh, split right? Stay spread out. Don't all group up, because if we're all grouping up, that means that they're going to be able, be able to hit multiple people in it. Um, it's a lot harder for, or, or it's a lot harder for us to keep our all of us up if we're all in a grab. This applies to any grab, right? It's a lot harder to, to stay alive if every single person's in there than if you just have, like, you have both supports sitting on the outside and they just have, like, for example, the tanks, right? Then we can toss in a nano on the Reinhardt. We could uh, try to pocket them and keep them alive with just healing. It becomes a lot easier when we just have a couple people in there versus your entire team. So st try to stay spread out because it's not it's not something that covers the entirety of a point, right? Not something that covers the entirety of the map. So if we stay spread out. It's not going to get all of us. Okay, so we finally used nano there. Well, was that two or three fights after in um uh one three? two mm, I, actually I think that was this is the third fight I think we just skipped on two fights because we had the first the uh oh uh, no because because there were two point two fights on first point weren't there um so we we didn't use it in three fights either or like in any case just keep mind again right faster we use our ultimate the more ultimates we're gonna be getting and therefore the more fights we're gonna be winning. Hey, good shots. Okay, anything in the ults categories? They have a rally, they have a, a dragon, they don't have any grav yet, so we don't, we don't really have to worry about either of, of those. And then we don't really have anything on our team that we need to worry about comboing. One thing I haven't seen much of is aggressive anti usage, which, again, I think we that's been a, a point. If we've at all gone over Ana, it's going to be a point that I'm always going to emphasize to most Ana players. Nades are very, very impactful, very, very important, and we got to look for aggressive anti nades, or else we're not going to have carrying potential. And it looks like in a lot of these fights, we're just being very reactionary with nades, right? At the very beginning of these fights, right when we're first engaging here, where um. Where we can see the enemy team, they're running into us, and uh, we're all chilling here. No one's critical. No one's going to be in danger of dying. The fight hasn't broken out. Ults aren't really starting to be used. They did use Rally early here. But for the most part, across most fights, Nade isn't going to be needed for the healing immediately. So what we can do is get away with using it for the anti-nade, especially early on, and looking for the anti-nade early on, because then that puts more pressure on them, forces them to back out, um, or uh, allows us to win, just run over them and win the fight. Um, because if, you know, can their, their Reinhardt can't run in and try to swing on our Reinhardt while his, while he's purple, right? Because that's just gonna, gonna put a real, um, pressure on him to where he has to back up. And the other thing is sleep doesn't seem to be doesn't seem like we're using it too frequently either. Okay, need comes in, but look how late into the fight we're using that aggressive anti nade, right? Imagine if we got that three per man anti nade where now Cree and Hanzo are both pre pretty much at 
like a third HP, right? They they died any and Reinhardt too, right? These guys all die if we had like one more person alive, two more people alive, right? If we had a Reinhardt here and he just like swung through them one time, they'd all be dead. So the point here is that this is an insane anti-nade. It just comes after the fight's lost, after it's too late, right? We need to be looking for that anti-nade at the very beginning of the fight or in the middle of the fight, not at the end of the fight. We also have, didn't use sleep until the very end of that fight, so that's something else that... Another point to keep in mind is that seems like it's very infrequent, especially when it's not really something we should be holding on to against that composition. Okay, positioning here. Take a look. First off, we kind of don't pay attention to our front line for a second. Um, okay, so what is the potential, or the, I'm not even going to say the potential problem. Um, what is the problem with our current positioning? Uh, can't land nades. Can't land nades, yep. Number one, I, there are. I, Currently, I have, like, two more th uh, points in mind. Uh, I am in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Out in the open, right, not next to cover, or next to any, like, potential cover where we can run behind it real quick. Okay, and then there's w one more big point from where we're, where we're standing. And this, is, this does happen here. I'll, I'll let you walk through it. What's the issue? And right about now. Uh, Ryan walking past that corner. Yep. So we put ourselves in a position to where if our team goes around that corner, we can no longer see him. So um, whenever we're positioning ourselves, the first checkbox that we're checking off, right, can we see our team? We need to make sure that, that, that that's also a, that's not just a current, am I capable of seeing my team at this exact moment? We also need to be thinking into the future and going, well, where is my team potentially going to go? Where is my team trying to go? This is very apparent in a dive, for example, right? Because in a dive, right, uh, you might start at, well, we're just, it's not going to be an actual, you know, I'm not going to give an example of an actual dive here, but you might start off from point A where we're at, and then all of a sudden in half a second be over here where Zarya is at, right? Because you have very fast mobility and movement abilities. Um, so when you're on a dive, this is very, very important because People are going to be moving all over the place, and if we're not ready for that, and we're not in a position to where we can see them if they go around the corner, we're not going to be able to heal for a very long time. So we need to predict where are they going next um, so we can get ready for it. So um, that might be point, and that might be where the, uh, where the enemy supports are, that might be where the enemy fight is. Um, if we're looking at this point here... And we're going, okay, carts are on the corner. Reinhardt looks like he's tippy-toeing on the, on the line here of going around. We just need to be very aware that he might try to go around, right? So th this positioning currently, not the greatest. Um, different options here. First off, we can go to the left. This is um, giving us a little bit better better of an angle on the on if our team goes to the left a little bit more. Um, this gives us an, an angle where we can land in a nade and sleep. And then we also have cover if we need to to duck to the right here. Um, other one that might be a, a little better, um, I'd say, is maybe standing around here where now we can come through left room. And this serves as a very, very easy off angle. Um, where we can use our team shield, this this acts as cover to where you know enemy team can't see us here, and then we can duck around this corner, land a sleep, land a nade, or vice versa, and then um, that acts as a very good angle to um, get our abilities off from. Yes, uh, alright, it's about to die again. We're very hesitant. With the uh, with a nano, I'd probably be using it there when our Reinhardt's critical. Keep in mind as well with with these when the enemy when our Reinhardt's being swung on by the enemy Reinhardt. Um, okay, never mind. We it did actually do that. Okay, so it, I did miss it because uh, he was around the corner and then the bubble came on him. All right, so yeah, that's that's good. My point was just going to be look to try to hit it on both Reinhardts because then you can stop his aggression. Ant, ant by anting him and then also healing Reinhardt, but you, you actually did do that there. It's just 
He just ended up missing it. Okay, sleep is also yet to be used here. Okay, good anti need. Good timing with it. Okay, good sleep. Dancing a little out into the open here. Just gotta be careful about something like this where we're we're going to the right in, in open territory when we're half HP. Um, and there's not really a big reason to besides, I guess, maybe looking for the sleep, but that can maybe also be done less dangerously than, you know, going out into this wide angle, right? We're, we're nowhere near cover currently. Um, the other thing is keep an eye on your jumping. I don't know if we've gone over this before, but just as a quick, quick summary, jumping isn't a good thing because it can make it easier to headshot you. So it's a good idea to not spam jump. I haven't seen you doing that much though. No, actually, never mind. We're doing it right now. <laughs> I think I try to really only do it whenever I'm like backing me. away. It's definitely a bad habit, though. Alrighty. Still hasn't hesitant to use her ultimate. Right, and now we're losing the fight because we're not. Okay, um, so whole kind of as a rough summary so far, um, sleep being used like once a fight, um, and then it's like it's very rare. Uh, remember, it's like a, what is it? An, a, a eight second cooldown, ten second cooldown. I think it might be ten or twelve. Ah, uh? sorry, I'm, I'm questioning myself now. I think it's twelve actually. Um, so twelve second cooldown, and fights definitely don't last twelve seconds usually. Um, so we're using it very infrequently with our sleeps. Uh, same thing with our nanos. Nano boosts are coming out once every three fights or so, right? We're six minutes and 37 seconds into this game. Um, because it, or, and then it also, usually there's a time at the start, but this time there wasn't. Um, so we know that that's actually how long it's been going on. Six minutes, 37 seconds, one single nano in that time, right? We've only popped one nano. We've had a second nano, but we just haven't used it, right? So we really, really got to make sure that we're looking to use that. Um, if you use nano in, and now of course, this isn't, this isn't going to be what you do every single time, but let's say you use nano in the fight that you got it every single time. Um, how many nanos do you think you get in like six and a half, and a half minutes? Uh... Uh, I don't know. Maybe, I mean, probably like six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like five or six. Yep. Um, the, really going to depend on comp and how, like, and how much healing you're doing and whatnot. But yeah, you're right. And so far, we've had one single one. So we're missing out on the potential for like four other ultimates, right? Which is pretty nuts. That's so many more fights that you have a significant advantage in. Um, because nano is a very powerful ability, and we're just not using it because we're holding on to it for multiple fights in a row. Now, so, go ahead. I have a question. So, would you, I guess in a team setting where, like, wasting ults is more of a big deal than, like, ladder, Yep. would you use nano more to, like, swing fights rather than, like, strictly use it for combos? Um... So first off, we don't have much to you like m many combos for our nano boost. If you're like so combos, you're talking about like something like a nano blade. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, or like nanoing Orion after he shatters, something like that. Um, yeah. So it really is going to come down to the situation and which one do you think is going to have more value. So I guess it, I'm interpreting the correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm interpreting the question uh, as um. It, if I think I need Nano to win the fight, should I Nano like a Reinhardt if we have a Blade available? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's going to be very situational. If you think that Nanoing a Reinhardt is going to, like, is required to win the fight, and you don't have, like, any other ultimates that you can use, because if you have other ultimates, let's say you have Valk or something like that, then you can just say, hey, use Valk here, we'll save Nano Blade for next fight. Right. Um. Then you can use other ultimates, but if you think that it's like kind of that, that's the only option you have, um, 
and to to win the fight, then winning the fight's usually going to be the uh, the better option because you can figure out another way to use your blade. Um, especially, you know, for example, if you have a Mercy here or a combo, Blade can combo with Grav. Um, but yeah, like, it's it's better to hold on to it because either way, right, You're if you're winning, how many fights is a Nano Blade going to win? One. How many fights is your Nano going to win if you use it to win that one fight? All right, I said it in the, in the sentence there. <laughs> one fight, yeah. right? So either way you go, you know you're you're still winning one fight and if you think that you're going to lose the fight just because you're not using nano boost then go ahead and use it and worry about the winning the next fight afterwards now there are going to be situations i'm not saying to always use it every single fight that you get it um of course especially in a team environment in a team environment you have ult planning so your ult might not be part of the plan and you might want to hold on to it for an extra fight um and sometimes you uh, lose the fight before you see an opportunity. Um, all I'm saying here is that there's plenty of opportunities that we didn't go for. And even if, if we're all planning to not use Nano Boost like three fights or four fights in a row, um, that's bad ult planning. And you definitely should be looking to use Nano Boost much more often at most you're not gonna like and when you're ult planning at you're just doing a rotation essentially you're at most you're not using an ultimate for one single fight you're not not using ultimates for three four fights in a row that's not how ult planning could be working right ult planning would be saying hey let's use uh a grav and a let's use grav falcon uh mines here and then save nanoblade for next fight right so we're saying let's use these ults let's combo these ults and then save these ults for next fight that's fine to save nano boost if you're if you have a plan but it's not fine to save nano boost for so many fights in a row to where you could have had two three other ultimates in that time right okay yeah that answered my question okay so let's skip that oh yeah and so continuing on we talked about sleep we talked about nano boost uh nades um seems infrequent uh, f for us looking for aggressive anti-needs which we've already uh, I, I mean i would hope that i have emphasized that point enough um yeah. yeah so nades just need to be looked we're using them frequently enough i think we're using them much more often than our sleep but they're just not really looking we're not really ever looking for the aggressive anti-need purposes um it's just once in a while that we do and uh Really, the only good need that we've had is was after the uh, a fight had ended. Um, health bar makes you paying attention to it more, so that's kind of on your awareness note. Uh, we did really good on on knowing when fights were won and lost, so we we didn't end up staggering. We never pushed in or backed out in kind of wrong situations. I mean, we didn't ult after fights were won or lost, so that's all good. Um, so yeah, I, I think that. And then mechanics, of course, you said at the very beginning of here that you just changed your sensitivity so that um, not really something we're going to be focusing too much on here. Uh, I believe you might have to skip a good bit ahead. Oh, because uh, they paused? I think so. It might be for a little bit. Uh, let's just skip. Alrighty. So um, we're working with different compositions here we are on a dive they are on a brawl composition um so let's see we have a we have a nano blade combo besides that we have echo so nanoing echo while she's ulting is usually going to be very good because that lets her charge her ultimates even faster because she's doing more damage and it gives her more swappability so for example like a um if you're always think if you're thinking about what is the best to combo nano with like a nano boosted uh echo who had copied reinhardt is gonna always be better than a regular reinhardt because on top of you getting the regular reinhardt value your nano boost is making her do more damage which makes her get more ultimates faster so um always nano boosting an echo is usually going to be a good option unless she's picking a target that's really bad to nano And then Diva and Ball aren't, aren't terrible options either, if you're forced to use one of them. Um, just remember, if you're if you're just flat out healing, 
right? Um, whenever we're just flat out healing, not a reason to expose ourselves and, and let them see us. So just standing on the open tiny little bit, just real quick duck behind that cover if you're looking to just heal the diva up real quick and then look to reposition yourself afterwards. Or if you're if you're if you want to do both at once, that's also fine. We just kind of chilled on the open, and that's what killed us. Okay, well we can. Oh, okay. So we toss in a nade after it. That's good. Want to look? Do you sleep? Okay, we did. Point. There you go. Ready. So, um, ults, they don't really have much. They have, uh, the uh, nano, they have dragon, they almost have high noon. On our side, we have a nano blade and we have an echo ult. So in this next fight, because of the fact that they don't have any defensive ultimates or anything like that, we can probably open up with the nano blade and then if we don't find any value with that just because like the only thing i could see with that uh happening would be just too many stuns coming out um then we can ult echo ult afterwards but you just want to let your echo to be no to be very hesitant um whenever yeah, that, that sleep was bad yep usually going to be a really good idea to just wait until after he slams um sometimes you can catch him while he's in midair um, you definitely don't want to try to go from when he's in the middle of slamming. Um, you want to go for either when he's just the kind of hovering above you or when he's about to, when he is already hitting the floor, but hitting the floor when he's on the floor is really going to be the most consistent option because it's going to be very easy, right? When you see him go up there, he's in a locked animation. He has to come down here. So you, you know, if you know, he's coming down, you pre aim right, you know, kind of besides where your Genji's at, and then that becomes a much easier sleep because we are we already know where he's going. Alrighty. For some reason, they used Dragon. So that's good for us. Alrighty. Team is rolling enemy team. In this meantime, we can just look at ultimates. They have Nano High Noon. Alright, I like that we're peeking at the very edge of cards so we can get heals off. And grenade. Alright, so they have Nano, they have High Noon. We have every single ultimate. Don't want to use every single ultimate, that would be very bad. We can probably just open up with a Nano Blade. Um, I, I think we can probably beat if they use the Nano High Noon, uh, not much else on their team that we're going to need to save beat for. So that could be a really good way to just help counter that, um, give Genji some extra survivability. Besides that, hopefully we won't need any of the others, but um, maybe you could just say beat or bomb or something like that. But you don't want to have to use six here, 100%. Okay, so we used bomb early there. We got a pick off of it. Oh, did we t try to toss that straight at Hog? Uh, I'm not really sure. Boom. Did that go through him? Where'd the, where'd the nade go? What? Huh? I don't even. Where, where's the I'm, nade I'm at? Lucky. I don't know. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna slow this down now. Boom. This will restore you. <laughs> what? That's pretty much. Alrighty. Well I well good nade, I guess. Question mark. Can't fault you on that one. Uh, but if you're a good Overwatch player, you just know every single bug in the game, and you know not to shoot at the hog there. Right, right, right. Yeah. 
Very nice sleep. Oh. Alrighty. Um, so, Nate on this. Baby Diva, probably not going to be necessary, especially since we just land that shot on her. Um, how much healing does this your your heal well, your shot do again? Like 70, 70 right? That's pretty much going to do most of her health, right? She's already at um, 20 to start this, or 60 to start this off. 70 gets her double that. Um, you know, gets her pretty high up there. Nade here, not necessary. Ends up just wasting it, and then now maybe in a situation like this, imagine what happens if we need that hog. That stops him from getting any benefit from the nano boost, or not any benefit. He stops him from getting healed by the nano boost. Um, healing in general, maybe it heals up your Genji too. All right, can't use his his uh, his E or his uh, self heal. Oh, very nicely. Look, we're using that a little bit more frequently this round, so that's really good. And we actually are hitting stuff and getting value out of it, right? Because we just got to pick out of that. Make sure we're paying attention to our health here. Again, we're coming in uh, without health. Um, make sure communicating with your team when you're in positions and when you're not in positions. Right? Like in this situation, we're out of LOS of pretty much everybody. This is a we're in a bad spot. Um, I don't think that this is necessarily your fault because you were out of the fight. Well, we will actually. You know, well, something we could have done here, which I didn't look at before, was after we get this kill on Balm, are, the, are they really pushed up at all there? Uh, I mean, they're on, there's a hog on car, but... Mm. Um, probably be good if we push up to kind of where Echo is, or right here. That way we kind of have a head start when we're pushing back in. Because again, our team has more mobility than us, and that puts us in a better position to rotate. But besides that, our team just engaged really fast here. Um, before, so we start walking, and the team goes up, we do a long little ro rotate around, that means that we're just not able to heal anything for this whole time, we're just out of fight. Now, it looks like team's winning, but, and that's a situation where you communicate, and you say, don't go in, to go in, you're done me, right, wait for your Ana, or you say, just keep, you're down a person, you're, watch out, I'm lagging behind. Right, that's something I like. I'll, I'll say in my teammates, even like while I'm back, walking back from spawn and they're about to push in, say uh, back or like watch out. You're I'm lagging behind. Don't go in. Right, if I see that they're about to engage or they're calling to engage, I'll say um, wait up. Right, that way that they're, they're not going in without me and they're not going in at a five v six. So the situation we do end up winning the fight, but that's just a like a lucky thing. Right, I, I I've used it. I don't know if I've used this phrase with you before, but probably have at some point in three sessions. Um, you know, a mistake that's not punished. Just because a mistake's not punished doesn't mean it's not a mistake in the first place. So just communicate it. Maybe try to be a little bit ahead. Ready, ultimates. Um, enemy team has one Bob. Look to here we can whenever we know that they have an ultimate that we can stop super easily. So such as whole hog, such as Bob, right? Um, we can just look to hold on to sleep until that happens. Um, that way we actually have sleep available and we don't end up wasting it and then having Bob come out a second later. We almost have Nano Blade. Probably going to look to just f do your best to farm up tanks here so we can get it online soon um, and then hopefully use it early in the fight. Yep, right now, yep, good job. Just farming up tanks. Almost have our ult. Like the reload. Yep, this is where we just we have it available. Just tell your Genshi, you know, whenever. Um, that would have probably been a good spot for Genji to go in, but. Yeah, it seemed like more like Genji was hesitant to use, use his ult. Oh. 
Look to get him as soon as he comes down. Watch the health bar coming in low HP again. Alright, that's something that's just been continuous over and over and over again, so that's something to keep in mind as well. That we always are coming into these fights at a lower health than we should be. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, comms got a little loud here. <laughs> Standing on the open, watch your positioning. All right, we get killed. It, us and Lucio get killed here just because we're chilling too far out in the open. That means that we end up uh, dying when we're about to cap. I don't know where Lucio was, but at least we were. Alrighty. Next fight. They used a, a little bit there. We, I think they used three ults. Um, they have Falk, they have more ult, we don't need to worry about those really. We have Beat, we have Mines, we have Echo ult, so we can probably look to just, they, they can, Echo and uh, Ball can look to use their ults on their own time as long as it's semi-early in the fight, and then we can Beat for whenever our team needs it. But here we can probably look to use all three, because um, we are we only have one fight anyways, um, and Right now, it looks like we have a significant ult advantage because uh, even though there, we only have one more ult, uh, Echo ult and Mines are much, much more powerful than um, Valk and, and Cole. And on top of that, we also have the beat to go along with it. Someone get that payload moving again. Hello? Hi. By the way, that was way too many muches. Maybe like one more. It's more powerful. It's not much, much, much more powerful. That wasn't as a not thought through on my end. I don't know. Echo ult's pretty good. Mm. Get back in the fight. Mm. Yeah, I just didn't mean to emphasize, <laughs> overemphasize that point. It didn't, it, not that much more. Okay. This is where we call lost fight. Um, why is this a lost fight? Well, I, uh, we. Oh, well, have we talked about why? <laughs> I, I, I apologize again because I'm doing that. I, I have completely lost my memory of all things that we've all, ever gone over. Um, what Have we talked about previously why the two is the middleman in watching kill feed? One to two is is a disadvantage. Two to three is a loss. So why is two in the middle? We have not talked about this. We have not talked about this? Okay, so two is in the middle, right, of... Uh, and I just said, you know, what two I'm referring to. Um, two is in the middle because there's a lot of other factors that go into whether or not you want or lost a fight. Um, which team has more health? Which team has more ultimates? Which team has better positioning? Which team just looks like they have the flat out advantage? Because we lost these players so early, and sometimes like you, you being down two people a lot, of, like isn't always gonna be a lost fight. But us being down two people at the very start of a fight usually is going to indicate that the fight's lost um, because of the fact that since it's the start of the fight, no one on their team's going to be too low. They're not going to have, they're not going to have given up any good positioning yet. Um, they're still going to have most of their ultimates. So when we're getting picked, two people picked at the very beginning of a fight, usually you just back out and look to regroup because you don't want to engage on that fight while you're down people. Now, if the fight had already happened, right, and you're in the fight and the fight, you're fighting the fight and they gave up good positioning and they're all low and they've ex used all their ultimates and we still have, we have, look like we're in a better position even if we are down some people then it is a little bit more even and we have a chance of winning that but in this situation where we're losing people right off the bat this is a lost fight and ball shouldn't be ulting and we should be calling no no assaults group up back up right that way we're not over ulting that way we're not staggering ourselves we're not uh feeding for a longer period of time here we're staying in the fight too long and then that means that we end up probably wasting ultos. I mean, I could be wrong here. Because there are, are there's always going to be a set exceptions. And at least you came back. Ball went off the map. I look to use Nano here. We're holding on to it. 
Okay, holding on the nano sill. Alright. That's the big thing this fight. Good mechanic shots, good sleep. Get a oh decent aid. Oh. <laughs> A little cutting a little bit close there again. Make sure hugging right side a little bit harder there. Okay, good job waiting for him to come to you. That would have been something that I would mention if you didn't do it was good job waiting for him to get on top of you because that meant that you could get both of you at once. So that was really good. Um, alrighty. Um, I liked it. The last fight we did actually really well. We landed good, I think two good sleeps. We landed a good nade. We, or two good nades, I think, actually. Um, Nano came out slightly late, and we were slightly, uh, out in the open. But besides that, we had a, that was a pretty good last fight on our, on our end. And we did end up pulling back the fight, even if it originally was looking lost. Our Lucio kind of zoomed back from spawn and saved the day with a beat. Um, even though Bob jumped off the map. But usually, you know, even if we, the, the thing is with those types of situations, you're you're gonna always have a chance of winning, right? But even if it's if it's like a forty percent chance of winning, um, because you're down to people, right? You have a there's still a decent chance of winning. But is it worth it when you could come back and be at a fifty percent chance of winning or a sixty percent chance of winning? Because now you have more ultimates, um, and sometimes that that difference is going to be even larger, right? Sometimes you only have a 20% chance of winning. Right? Is it really worth trying to take a fight when you know that you have a good chance of losing, right? 80% chance of losing um, when you could just come back in, try to regroup, come back in, and then be starting off at 50%, right? Or starting off at 60%. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind is that even though it did work out, not always going to work out and it um, you might want to lean more towards the safe side with it because then that uh, is going to win more often. Alrighty. Um, get that next, next one loaded up. I meant to ask you about this no. in between uh, sessions sometime, but do you still like regularly play the game? So essentially, regularly is, I guess, not as o nearly as often as I used to. So regularly in a sense that, yes, I'll get on multiple times in a week and I'll play for a couple hours. But that's very different in the fact that I used to play six hours a day every day. Um, or plus, even more than that, because I was pursuing professional Overwatch back then. Um but no, not as nearly as regularly anymore. But that's more than some people that I coach, and um, I think that uh, the three hour Overwatch, from my experience, has usually been the same game throughout every meta, just played differently in different situations. Um, so even if I haven't played the game and my mechanics are rusty, um, my understanding of the game from three hour, three thousand hours of playing the game and one thousand hours and uh, over a thousand hours, from like a thousand two hundred or something like that, and uh, like four point four scrim environments or tier three scrims and whatnot, um, have given me the the knowledge to be able to you know still do coaching even after I'm done. Yeah, that makes sense. I was just I was just uh, mm -hmm. curious. Yeah, and I keep still keep up with uh, the scene, um, watch some YouTube videos and stuff, keep uh, an eye on what's happening. But you could probably, <laughs> you know, ask any other um, coach in another sport, right? You ask a football coach, how regularly do you coach? <laughs> or sorry, how how regularly do you play the, and play in the in professional matches? <laughs> how regularly oh, yeah, yeah. Do, do you do you play in basketball games, right? Yeah, that's fair. Alrighty, oh, uh, Lord, let's see. Yeah, we launched on a need, it looks like, to start off. Okay, decent. Uh, it looks like Zarya kind of caught it from hitting anybody else. Watching your back. 
Okay. First thing that we're doing every single game is analyzing team compositions, right? We analyze our team comp. That way we can see what we're ulting. We have a Genji, so obviously Nano Blade's probably going to be the best here. Tanks are going to be all right. Um, now, the other thing is we want to look at the enemy team comp, because uh, as we discussed, that's going to very much impact how we're playing. Uh, if we know that they're on dive, changes up our play style very much significantly than if they're on a brawl here. Because of the fact that they only have one single character that's really going to be contesting us very much, and that's the Sombra, and we see her, see and hear Samba just sitting on the front and on their side there, right? We see Samba right there. We hear her shooting on point. Um, we can probably look to launch in some sleeps here, right? Again, look to use sleep a little bit more frequently. Launch it in. Shoot at the Reinhardt. Shoot at the Sombra, right? That way we're just using it at the start of this fight rather than holding on to it until the middle or the end of the fight. Um, we are good. We we're good with using the nade there, just not very infrequent with the sleep. Okay, um, the situation, especially since uh, this is probably something we've talked about, but when we're looking for heal nades on teammates, critical isn't always the same thing as them being in danger. We don't heal nade every single time somebody gets critical. If we have Sigma, who's critical all the way over here, not something we need to worry about because of the fact that Sigma is not currently, there's nobody on top of him. He has a shield in the way. He uses his eat here in a second. Right? Because of all these things, nade's probably not going to be needed. We don't see too many people shooting at him from our point of view, right? We can see our shots coming in from this perspective. Because all those things, like, all these things are adding up, nade's probably not going to be needed here, which means that this is just a wasted nade, essentially. I mean, it could be used for a different uh, option, right? So just be thinking through... What, when, and how, why are we using nades? Right. Oh, oh, oh! Now to accelerate. It's just a scratch. You'll be fine. Oh, turn it up. This is going hey, to. Hey, very good nade. <laughs> Look to launch in a sleep. I maybe watch for the Genji a little bit too long. Okay, in this situation, um, we want to do our best to give all the loose the healing to Lucio. Do you know why? Uh, so we can build beat. Yep, and the fact that we already have our Nano Boost, right? So. Since we already have Nano, um, we can heal maybe someone like Ball, who's critical and all the way over here, and Lucio can't heal him. But everyone else on point, just say, Lucio, you, you heal everyone else up for beat, right? That way he can charge beat up off of the health of everyone else, um, and then have it for the upcoming fight, or be a lot, a lot closer to so maybe have it for the next fight. Whereas we already have our ult, so we probably don't need this healing ult-wise. And then that also means that we have more time to be looking around for maybe somebody who's in more danger. Like Ball. Okay, next fight. A lot of ultimates. They have Grav. They have Wall. They have Cole. They almost have EMP. They pretty much have Beat. Um, this is going to be a pretty tough one on us, right? So this is going to be this is gonna be a fight where ult tracking and ult planning is going to be super, super useful. Because unless this is executed perfectly, there's a ton of stuff that can go wrong, right? If we use Nano Blade right away, right off the bat, they can hack it. They have beat. They have grab um, to grab them, right? Probably not going to go too well. They almost have EMP, so they could even EMP them. Um, now, the best course of action here is, first off, tell your team that they have grab, right? We don't really need, in this situation... Unimportant ultimates are Simwall and Cole. Yes, they're slightly important, but they have impact, but not too much. Grav, let your Genji know they have Grav, and she's pro and your she might look to grab you. Right, tell your team to play, play a little bit spread out. Um, beat. Okay, two, two different ways we can look to take this out. We have a Sombra. We can look to hack the Lucio, 
Or we could Sig Flux first. Sig Flux baits out Beat, puts them all down a little bit of health if the Beat's late or not timed correctly or whatever, right? And then we can come with a Nano Blade after Beat's out, right? So in this situation, the big thing is our team needs a plan of attack or else we just flat out lose here because they have too many things that can stop our Nano Blade. Um, so let's see how this works out. I'll probably say the easiest one to go for here would just be to um, go for this plan for the Sig, Sig Flux and then just call for the Sombra to look for the hack on the Lucio if she can, right? Hack on the Lucio if she can means that we maybe might not even need the Nano Blade if Sig Flux gets, in, gets a whole lot, but um, we, Sig Flux is probably going to be a little bit more consistent to look for than the hack. This was super bad. I don't even know why I made this rotation. Yeah, it looks like we kind of tunnel visioned and didn't pay attention to where the enemy team was here. So we kind of ran straight at the Genji and we didn't look at our right side and then we kind of ran on the open. Okay, good nade. We end up surviving. Okay, so Genji gets in. Why is Lucio delayed here? Um, I want to leave your point of view here. Um... Oh, he got slammed up in the air by the ball. All right. Um, so, ball ended up opening up for the blade to get a kill. Sombra got another kill. So now we're looking in like a, we're looking to be in a good position here. We got a good nade in. We were out a little bit out of position there. Why is it double clicking? Okay, just out of position. Other than that, good timing on the nano. Good nade. Okay, maybe a little bit uncoordinated. We didn't do anything really to take out the beat. Um, we just ended up getting lucky with the ball slam. I, I mean, maybe the, for all I know, that might be coordinated. I don't know. Um, but uh, at what, what level are, are these scrims like diamond? Uh, yeah, these are like mid diamond scrims. Yep. Uh, I don't know if that level of coordination is going to be happening. To, I'm going to slam the Lucio beat up in the air. But... Um, <laughs> You know, it's definitely possible. Um, and then... Uh, it, the other, it was coordinated. Yeah, and then the other thing is that uh, they didn't have grab yet. That was at a 99%. Um, so that's one other thing there. So coming into the next fight, we have... Or they have grab. They have shatter. They have EMP. Probably going to look for an EMP shatter and or grab. In this situation, Lucio needs to hide so that he can get beat off. Um, we can look to EMP first, or we can look to counter EMP, like right after they've used EMP. Um, if Sombra hides as well, or uh, whatever, that way we can pretty much stop them from doing anything and we're on even playing fields. Um, then the sides that we don't, we don't really have too much else we can look for. Like if we wanted to, we could all. There's a few different plans of attack, and there usually are going to be a few other plan, a few different plans of attack we can do. We can also look for an EMP Sig Flux that could also be pretty useful because we can just stop them from using their ultimates and then get a ton of value out of the ult. How do you play around the grab when you have Nano Blade? The grab when you have Nano Blade. Okay, so um, that's going to be mainly on the Genji's end. Not really much that you can do directly about it, but if you want to pass it on to your Genji, the big thing is you're going to want to add in a delay with your with your attack. So essentially, uh, I guess it might be best to demonstrate this, but um, oh, snap, I'm going to have to charge Blade up. Oh, I think we're also out of time too, so this is going to just be a wrap up after we're done this. Um, but essentially with your Genji, um, you just don't want to go in immediately, right? The... What's going to be easy for your um, for the Zarya to grab him if like he just immediately dashes in. But what you're going to do is you're going to ult. And then you can either do a little jump or you can just pretty much just like sit still and wait a second and then go in. Or you can kind of dash in but then just back out last second. So um, essentially with your dash, what you can do is dash up. Um, and because you have a double jump, right, you can dash up. You can jump. And then you can go in. This can dodge out uh, stuns. This can dodge out sleeps. Th this can bait out the grab. So we can kind of dash up like this. And then jump. And then wait. And then go in. Right. 
So you adding in that jump kind of mixes up things where now you're adding in a delay and you can even add in an extra half second second and then dash in aggressively. And then that can bait out sleeps. Um, that was something that I had seen Necros do up, up against like ML7. Um, where essentially I'm just... Yeah, yeah. Yep. So that's, that's how you can look to bait it out. You can also look to deflect it, though that might be a little bit difficult, especially if he just launches it at the ground. Um, that's more like a mechanical thing. I've always found it difficult to uh, deflect grabs um, as a Genshi. Just I've heard a lot of different things. Yeah. Like there, there's this one guy that told us to dash in the air, blade, and then just don't do anything with the blade. Um, I wouldn't say that particularly because then especially if you're getting nano that literally does nothing well what yeah we, ne we never did that. <laughs> that that doesn't seem like a very smart idea to me because that means that you've just used either one ultimate or two ultimates and you got nothing now maybe if your plan is to like if your plan is just to bait out the grab because sometimes that's a thing that you can do right let's say you're just trying to get beat out with by with using a blade and then you just want to hold on to the nano and then um, give it to somebody else or something like that or you have another plan to use something else we can look to um, Like uh, I guess an example would be like let's say you only have to win one point and they have beat and you have a ton of ults Then you can just look to use another ultimate first to kind of bait out the beat and like I said with the sig flux um, But yeah, if you're if you're just using a nano blade just to counter one grab that's Not any value. That's like negative value in fact um, you can wait it out a second or two, but you're never not gonna want to wait out the entire ultimate. You're gonna want to go for a kill or two. Alrighty. Um. So, kind of wrap up time. Um. Not too much is different from the initial wrap up. Um. I think we did better with our ult usage in the second. I honestly I don't remember mentioning our ult usage in the second time around um so in that second um vod that we went over i don't think old usage is nearly as much of a problem sleep usage was still a thing that we needed to be worked on make sure you're using sleep much more often earlier in the fights especially when they're not on a dive when they are on dive or when they do have flankers you can look to use it much more sparingly and look to use it when they're on top of you um but if they're not just you know launch it in there get someone at a long range um, with a long range sleep with your nade really really look for those aggressive anti nades um, at a longer ranges if you're not confident uh, which it, it seems like you have actually been landing them pretty frequently at the longer ranges but just keep in mind as well as the scope tech is also an option sorry I had the cough there um, All right. so besides that health bar make sure you're paying attention to your health bar pay attention to you know of course I think you uh uh, just keep your eyes and ears open and be kind of paying attention to ultimates and ult tracking and ult planning because even if you don't do that all the time it's still useful information to know how to do and if like that's something that like even if I had someone on my team who did all that I can assist them with it I can call strats if I wanted to um, if, if I had an idea for something um, I can do that in my ranked games, even if I'm not doing that in a team environment. I can call out ultimates. I can call out. Uh, I can call out how to use uh, like fight planning, because essentially, like I was never the fight planner or the ult tracker in my team, but uh, uh, or any of the teams I was on. But I just watched and listened the the people on my team, and then just replicated that in in comp. It was really really how I learned to ult track, um, and then that's how I and ult, ult track and ult plan. Um, and that's how I you can just look to do it is just practice in comp, um, and then that's just gonna be an effective tool that you can use. Um, besides that, didn't you know, I didn't focus too much on mechanics, uh, and it didn't even seem like there were there was too much wrong with mechanics. We weren't missing like every single shot, so that was good. Um, do you have any questions on anything that we've gone over? I don't believe so. I know the nade thing is just a bad habit. I'm gonna have to break. Yep. I think for the most part. I try to use nades to compensate for missed shots, mm -hmm. which I know is bad, but it's going to take yep. a little while to break it. Yeah, the other thing is just to uh, kind of um, assess the danger level of people, right? Is nade actually needed here? And on top of that, we should be looking for, we should be actively looking for nades, because when we do, when we get those antis, te teammates will be just taking less damage in general. Um, 
because we're putting pressure on the enemy team. And then on top of that, you know, we get the immediate anti-value, which can lead to faster fight wins versus using it after fights are lost or in the middle of fights. Alrighty. Um, so any other questions? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay, but well, I'm going to end the recording here.